Hello there, Ice Cream Gecko here and today I'm going to show you how I make my own pizza. I will show you how I make the dough, which toppings I put on there and uh, also how I bake the thing. And in the end I will have a taste test and uh, you are free to join in and leave wherever you want. Um, I'll guide you through the individual steps and in the end I hope we have a finished tasty product. So the dough that I make is, um, well, really sufficient for four pizzas. Uh, you can make bigger pizzas, smaller pizzas. It's, it really depends on, on what kind of size you want in the end. Um, but I portion it down to, to four individual pizzas when I'm ready with this. So let's start with the ingredients. We need fresh yeast. I take 10 grams of that. We've got salt. I take 8 grams of that. We've got pizza flour. Um, it's important that you actually get pizza flour. Uh, tipo zero zero, tipo double zero is is often what's what's described on there. Uh, normal flour doesn't really work. At least the one that we've got here in Germany. I tried that several times and it never it never went so well. And uh, yeah, I just took the pizza flour and every everything just went smoothly. So uh, that's that. Uh, you need. Lukewarm water, 325 milliliters of that, and you need a tablespoon of olive oil. I will start mixing all of that together now. <laughs> Feel free to watch. So uh, yeah, a scale is also very important for what we are doing here. At first I'm going to fill this up with uh, about 325 milliliters of uh, lukewarm tap water. Um, depending on where you live, your tap water might not be drinkable. It, fortunately, it is over here. Uh, maybe you just take a, a kettle and, and boil some water and kind of mix it in between. You should still be able to put your hand in it you know, easily. It, it shall not hurt because that just kills the yeast if uh, the water is too hot. And if the water is too cold, the yeast uh, isn't really going to work as intended. Um, these are microorganisms and they need some, some temperature for their metabolism to, to actually get going and uh, produce uh, the gas that we want for the dough to expand and become fluffy. I'll fill this up now. So this is really lukewarm. It's, um, it's really important, that, you know, like I said, that you don't make it too hot. And uh, yeah, working with uh, too hot of, a, of water is also not really all that pleasant, so uh, keep that in mind. I'm uh, maybe looking quite weird while taking out the yeast with a little uh, cake fork. <laughs> I, I only used this one once, so it doesn't look that appetizing anymore, but yeast really never looks all that appetizing anyway, so that's not that of a big deal. So 10 grams is what we need. Let's see if that is it. We've got 11, so that should be fine. And what we're doing now is we are stirring this up and um, we are trying to, to get a nice solution down here. Or is it a suspension? I don't really know. Because solution, you actually have to have solute in there, but those microorganisms, they, they shouldn't be completely dissolving, right? Doesn't really matter to me. <laughs> so, now we are taking a bowl that we are going to use to mix in the flour and the salt and the olive oil and in the end the yeast as well. Okay, let's get this zeroed out. Take a pizza flour. By the way, they always write there's one kilogram in there. There never ever is. It's always too little. So don't rely on, on what's stated there on those packages. They are lying to you. Blatantly lying to you. you know, sometimes I think maybe I should uh, ring them up, give them a call, because I honestly don't find that this is okay. I've got very little money and I've got no money to give away. So that's, that's why I'm sometimes aggravated. <laughs> so, so looks like regular flour, it's, it's white, like there's nothing special about that. But there's more, I think there's more gluten and, and all kinds of proteins in it that uh, make it stick a lot better. 
so that you can actually you will feel that if you use regular flour and not those not this pizza flour it's not going to be as elastic with the regular flour and uh, you want to have a kind of elastic dough to actually you know spread it out properly because otherwise it just uh, it just breaks it's neither fun nor helpful wait let's get this make this quicker Oh, 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 oh. Sometimes I am a bit pedantic, so therefore I will actually remove the excess dough. Look at that. Okay, now we can put this away. Um, when we... I was going to say something. When we are rolling up the dough later, we don't need this pizza flour again, we can take regular ones. It's just for the, for the substance of the pizza dough, this is very important. So I zeroed that out again, and now we're adding the salt. 8 grams of salt is what we need. And uh, usually people put like 5 grams in there, but I like my dough a bit, just bits on the salty side. Somehow I, I enjoy that. Um, Maybe you have got, I don't know, blood pressure issues or something, you know. It's, it's just up to your own taste how much you really want to have in there. And that should be fine. Is it? Kind of. Almost. Come on. Yeah, there we go. It is in. And uh, technically, we, can, we could add our little solution here with the yeast already. But I'm not going to do that. I will uh, at first mix this right here up decently so that we don't have to worry about uh, some salt not being distributed evenly. Um, that sometimes can be a bit annoying, you know, when you take a big bite of, um, out of the pizza and uh, you get a big chunk of salt. That's not too nice because with the yeast in there, it really is uh, difficult to get everything mixed up properly and evenly. That uh, can be a, a, an impossible task, whatever. <laughs> oh shit. It's not too, not too bad. So now we can uh, take a look at here. If we've got still yeast on the fork when we go through at the bottom and maybe we can take a look from the underside here. Yeah, you can, can't really see anything of, of something uh, being there on the bottom. But it seems to be evenly distributed inside of the thing. Turning off the scale really quick. And what you want to do now is uh, not put everything of that in there at once. You're gonna have a really hard time getting this all mixed then. You wanna put little sips of our yeast solution in there and just stir, uh, mix it up evenly. The olive oil uh, we will put in at the end when we have um, mixed a little solution here with that whole flour salt mix. You can see already we're getting a bit of moisture in there. A few crumbs are forming. And it's really crucial to get as much as much flour mixed up. Don't want to have big lumps at the bottom. If something spills like here, it, it's not too big of a deal, you know, that's kind of part of the process, I guess. But um, the stuff that you got into in, inside of the bowl, that, that should be mixed somewhat evenly.
At this point we're adding the olive oil to the mix. This right here is a bit, you know, a bit, um, well, more moist than usual. Usually you don't have it that, that wet, but it's not that big of a deal. The end product shall be fine. It always is, so I'm not too worried about it. And as long as it's not a kind of liquidy type of, of mass in here, as long as it's kind of like slime-ish, it's all fine. No big deal. And the olive oil, other than making this a bit more more smooth, I guess, I don't really know how to call that in English, it uh, makes it smell beautifully. I love the smell of olive oil. So, that is now done for the moment. And now we're gonna do something to keep this all protected. I usually take a kitchen towel, make it wet, and then place it over here. And uh, by the wetness of it, it stays uh, fine on the bowl. Uh, it depends on, on really what you use to, to mix your ingredients in. But um, right here, it's, it's working perfectly. So you get that kitchen towel nice and moist. Rinse it out, bring it out a bit. I don't know. Get the masses of water out of it. And then you just spread it on top of the bowl. Get it sealed off here. And then you let this sit at a somewhat warm place for about 30 minutes. So now 30 minutes later, your dough should look something like this. This again, a bit more wet than usual, but uh, now we get to the portion sizing of the whole thing. A scraper like this is really useful for this task. We're going to scrape everything out of the bowl onto a working bench or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, sometimes you know, it's, it's, it's pretty sticky. Sometimes it can be difficult to get your hands clean right after that. That's just something we have to live with for the moment. I'm going to split the dough into four somewhat even pieces. Turn the scraper around, try to get everything seated in its own spot. There we go, somewhat. <laughs> and now we can take our regular flour, put some on here, spread it out, and uh, Put some of our blobs in here and we're now starting to roll them up to make them easier to handle because really you, you will not get those sticky blobs out of the little Tupperware <laughs> containers if you don't have them in a bit of flour. So take your hands at some point because it's not that sticky then. Blah. roll them around a bit, get a bit of the air that's in there out, compress them slightly and then you can take one of your Tupperware boxes or whatever kind of container you're using, put just the blob in here and uh, yeah, let it wait for, for the further, further procession of our little adventure. A little culinary adventure. Next one. It's always a bit of a mess when I'm doing this. 
But that's part of the fun, right? Certainly, I have to clean your hands quite often, especially when I'm uh, fiddling around with the camera. I don't want to have dough inside of that, that rotating wheel or in between the knobs and buttons. I'm going to take the third one. I'll put a bit more flour onto a working area. Spread that out a bit. And I actually didn't do that well of a job while portioning a little dose. They are not really the same size at all. At least that's what I'm thinking at the moment. Roll them around so that they're evenly covered, somewhat evenly covered with flour. They're still going to be sticky when you have them in the fridge for a couple of days. Well, you shouldn't have them for too long in there, but I usually keep them in the fridge for up to two, sometimes three days, because really four pizzas in one afternoon is just quite a lot. Close that up as well. And now for the last one. We arrange a little flower pit. Try not to get flour inside of the dough. Really try to keep it on the outside. Above four separate uh, portions. Because once it gets inside, it, it, now it's not that bad, but when it happens later, um, you really have a, a hard time evenly distributing that on the working area because you then got um, you got kind of slots in there that just don't stick together because of the flower. The longer they, they stay sitting, the less of a hassle it, it becomes just because the, the flower inside of there is just going to, you know, get wet and start sticking to the rest of the dough all around it, but when you're doing the fresh one, right after our next 30 minute waiting period, it can be a bit tricky, that can become a problem. So the last one, I'll put it in. And now it is once again, time to wait for 30 minutes. So after those 30 minutes, we are now starting to roll out or spread out our dough and uh, for that I'm using this wonderful workplace. <laughs> We're going to just take in some flour, spread that out. Now we get one of our containers, get the dough out. Let me grab my scraper. It doesn't stick too bad. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It is fine. So, I'm going to roll it in the hands, put it down here, roll that around. The flour that was on the outside of the dough is now pretty much uh, soaked up by the thing. And now we're starting to spread that out. I'm not using one of those rolls. Just doing this by hand. That way we've got full control over the stickiness of the dough itself. So the first steps of spreading out is just pressing down on it, switching it around. I'm not going to throw it. You know, that comes with practice the more you do it, but um, really I don't want to cover the whole kitchen in flour because uh, once I tried it, it really was about that. It was just, I covered the whole kitchen with flour and uh, that, was not, that, that was not pleasant to clean up. Now I just take it at the top here and let it kind of settle to 
further pull it out. That's really a decent way to, to spread out the dough without having to t actually toss it. There we go, it's quite large. I'll put this here. We've got a very, very thin spot right here that's not too cool. You can um, try to fix that, like that. And this is now a decently sized pizza dough. And I'll put that onto our baking tray now. Let's grate the excess flour to the side here. We can use that if we were to um, prepare a second dough. But uh, for now it's just one pizza that we're doing. That goes here. And at this point I'm going to preheat the oven. Heat from top and down. Heat from top and bottom at 220 degrees centigrade or Celsius, however you want to call that. So for tomato sauce, I use this brand right here. Um, there's some seasoning already in there, but I usually put some oregano, 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 and uh, some thyme, and usually some uh, basil on here as well, but I don't have any basil on hand unfortunately, so that is not going to happen today. But it's not too bad, some of it is already in this sauce. And this is pretty good sauce, but there are some, some larger tomato chunks in there, and uh, I've, I've played with the idea of just taking a blender and blending everything smoothly, but um, up to this point, I haven't really gotten around to that. For our cheese, we are using mozzarella. I'm usually I'm usually using uh, the cheap knockoff brands. Well, not knockoff brands, but the brands from Aldi or Globus. This is actually brand mozzarella and I just, I just want to try out if it's actually better, if the price is justified. Um, because in the past, when I ever tried that, it really wasn't. And the reason because I take all that juice out of there is uh, because I use only half of a bowl of mozzarella for one pizza. Anything more than that is really just overkill and uh, the whole pizza just stays too wet. And this way, when you only take half of the mozzarella, you really don't have to worry about the other half drying out. You can leave this in the fridge overnight and only this little part on the top here is going to dry out. And uh, that's not too bad either, because all of the moisture around it is um, re resaturating it, sort of. Now we're spraying the mozzarella onto the pizza. I usually eat half of this while putting this on because I usually make pizza when I'm hungry and I somehow don't have the discipline to contain myself. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to refrain from doing that just for you, just today, just to be a bit more polite every once in a while. <laughs> Here we go. That's done. Today's pizza is going to be vegetarian, so we are not putting any pepperoni, salami, ham or anything on there, no, that's, that's not good. This one is better, 
If you watch my ice cream reviews, you probably have seen this one before. I'm using red onions to put on the pizza. There isn't really that much of a difference in taste, but uh, more of a difference in color. And uh, red onions look so much better on pizza than regular white onions do. That's the reason why I use red onions. And I cut rings out of them because it just it, it just looks pretty. Don't want to put too much onion on there because uh, you're going to smell yourself for quite a few hours if you put like a, a whole onion on here. It looks good, but it really is a bit much to be honest. But this is a small one, so maybe I'll get away with it. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. And with these ones, I don't really have problems with, with my eyes getting runny. It really isn't too bad. That will be it. Um, I sometimes put this in with the mozzarella. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to do a pizza later this evening. So, yeah, I'll keep that in there. That way it doesn't dry out. For tomatoes, I use sherry tomatoes. Don't use those big ones, those from the from the huge greenhouses and all that. Uh, they don't taste of anything really. And when you get bad ones, you, you've got they they sometimes have got a really weird texture to them. It's not really pleasant in your mouth. And and when they're on the pizza, you're you're not going to taste anything of them. And also these these smaller ones, they. Uh, they tend to, to keep their integrity for a whole lot longer, so you don't have a weird mushy thing lying around there. Because those really big tomatoes, those are like almost fist size, there's just, there's only water left in them. There's, there's no real tomato in that gene pool anymore. They're just built for size, grown for size and then weight. But in the end it's, it's just water. And these ones here, they it tastes a lot better too. <clears throat> Sometimes really sweet tomatoes, um, they're like even more special ones than those, like sweet cherry tomatoes. These ones here are a bit sweet, but not so bad. They've got a nice acidity to them. Really overall, well balanced. Um, vegetable there. And I cut out the green parts just just for the lols. Let's place them on here somewhat evenly. already enough. Those are going into my mouth. Oh. And all we have left to do now is put some, some seasoning on there. Like this is oregano. There we go. The cheap little stuff. It's sufficient though. Don't need to spend a whole lot of money on simple spices. There really isn't that much of a difference in taste after all. Some thyme. And like I said, I don't have basil on hand. That's why I don't put basil on here. Usually I put basil on here. I really enjoy basil on decent basil 
smell and, and taste on pizza. It's, it's great. And somehow I always put too much thyme on the pizzas. It's not too bad though. Tastes good. So now I'll put this into the oven um, for 18 minutes at 220 degrees centigrade. And uh, when this is finished, I will see you again. And here we are. This is the finished product. I just pulled it out of the oven exactly after 18 minutes of baking time. And uh, this is it. And uh, I have to say, it is just beautiful. The little pizza is absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> it's going to be tasty as well, but I do not know if I can record that because it's really hot at the moment. It's certainly going to take some time so that I can give it a bite and just listen to the, to the sound of me cutting this. This is delicious. It's still hot, it's right out of the, right out of the oven. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. See, got a nice bend to it. Perfezione, at least for me. The only thing I can change about this to make it even a bit better, to, to maybe get the, the bottom of the pizza into a nice colour, is to use a, a pizza stone, you know, one of those um, one of those baking stones that you put into the oven. Um, the problem with that is though that you have to also preheat that with the oven and at the moment I don't have any, any kind of gear to, to put a pizza to transfer it from wherever I'm, I'm, I'm doing it onto that, onto that tray. Um, with those pizza stones, you don't really want to use um, parchment paper either. You want to have the pizza directly on it. And it's quite difficult to get that transfer just right. Um, I'm working on that though. So, which one am I going to try? I guess I'm going to try this one. I hope that I don't burn my mouth. I did that a few weeks ago and uh, I did it badly. I was very hungry and the pizza was very tasty, but um, I had trouble with that, with just, you know, <sighs> burns in the mouth area. It was, it was not pleasant to deal with. Let's give this a try. Really good. Yeah, definitely. Let's take a bite of the crust right beside the microphone. Nice crust. <laughs> you did don't get that from a takeaway pizza. And that way, when you're arriving at home, it's nothing better than um, actually fresh made pizza straight out of the oven. Delivery pizza just can't reach this. Very nice. So if you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comment section below. If you've got questions, also feel free to ask. I'm uh, happy to respond to you. And if you tried that yourself, uh, this recipe, then uh, let me know how it went. I would love to hear from your own successes. Thank you very much. I hope I'm going to see you soon. Until then, bye.